Hey guys, it's Ornlu, and uh, a few weeks ago I did a video uh, tier list on the Castle Age unique text for the civilizations in AoE 2, so I thought, well, now is about probably a good time to do the Imperial Age unique text. So that is the gold crown uh, upgrade that you get at the castle. Now, when we compare these to the Castle Age unique text, the Imperial Age unique texts tend to be really strong. They tend to be some of the best upgrades available to that given civilization. So I'll just tell you guys right away that this ta uh, this list is going to be a bit more top heavy than, you know, a generic, you know, curve or whatever. Uh, but with that in mind, there are still, you know, texts that are better than others. Uh, the S tier texts, these are powerful civilization defining texts that I think importantly apply to like several different units and are a lot of the uh, the late game strength of that given, given civilization. A tier techs uh, can be really good as well, but they either only apply to one unit, making them a bit more situational, uh, or are just not quite there in terms of the power level of uh, these guys, uh, but still very, very strong techs. Um, uh, B tier. Uh, these techs are good, they're solid, um, but either they're a little too situational or they're like icing on the cake sort of things where it, you can get units that are already good. It makes them a little bit better, um, but it doesn't like necessarily make something, uh, you know, absolutely defining uh, in and of itself. Uh, and again, it's just a little bit more situational. Speaking of situational uh, C tier text, there aren't that many of them. They're just, you know, even more situational. And if you see a game go to Imperial Age, you don't necessarily need to see that civilization pick up that tech. Uh, and then the D tier techs, uh, there's only a couple of them. They're just not very good upgrades. I'll leave you guys to think which those are. So without further ado, let's get right into this. Um, I will be showing you guys here in the uh, tech tree thing. And of course, we are going to be starting with Aztecs, and their unique tech is Garland Wars. 450 food, 750 gold, pretty darn pricey, but it gives infantry plus four attack. Now, this is like the same as getting an additional entire blacksmith melee attack upgrade line, and yeah, we're going to be going right to the S tier with that one. Uh, it is just an incredibly strong unique tech. It is what makes Aztec infantry like super strong in the late game. Yeah, you have good farming, um, but that doesn't really matter post handcart, and uh, you have the faster production. But yeah, it makes your champions, your jaguars that much more powerful, your eagle warriors, of course, and it makes your... Um, pikemen at least semi kind of usable so definitely s tier upgrade civilization defining applies to several different units uh pretty uh cut and dry there uh next is going to be the bengalis and their imperial age unique tech is mahayana 800 wood 650 gold it is kind of expensive but it means the villagers take up 10 percent less population space this is how you can get your 222 villagers uh, as the Bengalis, and this is going to be a B-tier unique tech. It's not like you can see it every game. It is very much like, okay, you're really, really going to be going for the, the population efficiency. And it can be, you know, super impactful in games, but uh, if the game is more fast-paced, then you just don't have the, uh, the resources really to invest into this tech. And it has to be a game where population efficiency matters. Uh, and in those situations, Bengalis tend to excel anyway. Uh, so this is like making Bengalis even better in the situations where they are already quite strong. So yeah, B tier for sure. Berbers have Magrebi Camels, 700 food, 300 gold. Camel units regenerate HP very slowly. Uh, this is going to be in the C tier. It's a nice thing to like get for your camel archers especially because it can help them survive for like a super, super long time, uh, you know, over the course of like several fights. But it's not something that you can really justify prioritizing in most cases. It's like, an, okay, let's pick it up just so we can round out our army. And it's usually the last upgrade you get when going for camel archers, and I think that says a lot. Bohemians have Hussite reforms, 800 food, 450 gold. Uh, monks in monastery techs have their gold cost replaced by food. This sounds OP, but it's actually a C-tier upgrade. It can be nice in like big, big late game situations, but the thing is, if you're going for, like, a ton of monks, chances are you're really low eco, and in that case, gold is actually easier to come by than food, which makes this tech a nerf <laughs> to your monks. Like, how many games have I seen where the Bohemian player is, like, 1 TC, they're on, like, 50 villagers in the Imperial Age, and they're just mining a ton of gold? You get free gold mining upgrades, of course, as Bohemians. Well, you don't want your monks to cost food, then. You need them to keep costing gold. 
Um, so, I mean, it's a situational tech. It can be good. It's definitely not D tier, but it is, yeah, it's just very situational. Maybe to like BF or super late game arena. Next is going to be Warwolf for Britons. Improves your trebuchets by giving them blast damage. It also makes them 100% accurate, which is oftentimes more impactful. Uh, but still, it is a very strong tech and is going to be going in the A tier. Uh, it does only affect trebuchets, it doesn't affect anything else, and it, the effect doesn't like make trebuchets do more damage unless you're facing clumped up units, but it is still very powerful and it gives Britons a nice long range option in, in dealing with skirmishers, where otherwise they would be sort of stuck with generic onagers, um, or like fairly bad cavalry. Uh, and it lets you win every single treb war, which is really helpful. And it's just a strong tech in general. I don't think it's quite S tier, but it is still... It's the reason that Britain's Siege isn't just terrible, right? You don't have Siege Ram, you don't have Siege Onager, um, no Bombard Cannon, so your trebuchets are really going to be what helps you shine. And uh, yeah, Warwolf is definitely a very helpful tool in the late game. Bulgarians have both Bilbo and Frodo Baggins, or Baggins, whatever. 900 food, 450 gold, and the Militia line receives plus 5 melee armor. This does make them cap out at 9. This is going to be a solid tech, going to be going in the B tier. It does only affect the Swordsman line, so it doesn't make your pikemen any better. Uh, but it does give you some really strong melee combat swordsmen. Of course, you get the uh, swordsman upgrades for free as the Bulgarians, so you're always you know, going to be using this with two-handed swordsmen. And it gives you some of the best swordsmen in the game, but the tech is pretty expensive, and swordsmen are you know fairly situational. A lot of the times you just kind of need to be going for halberdiers or cavalry or siege. Uh, it's not that swordsmen are useless by any means in the late game with Bulgarians. I mean, Baggins two-handed swordsmen are quite good, and that's why the tech is in B tier, but it's still a little too situational for me to justify putting it any higher. But that's okay. Bulgarians still have stirrups. Next is the Burgundians, and they have the stupid, stupid upgrade, aka Flemish Revolution. 1,200 food, 650 gold, and of course it upgrades all of your militia, uh, villagers to Flemish militia and allows you to train the Flemish militia at the town center. It also researches super fast. This... It's really hard to rate this because, like, it can instantly win new games. I'm going to put it in C tier because it's still mostly a Hail Mary thing. And if things are going well as, you know, Burgundians, you're never getting this upgrade because, you know, it just tanks your entire economy. Duh. It can be game winning, but I still feel like, especially these days, it is situational enough. It is rare enough that I... I don't like the upgrade, so maybe that's my bias coming in, but we're going to stick it in D tier and not feel, or C tier and not feel bad about it. Next is Burmese with Monopore Cavalry, 400 food and 400 gold. Pretty cheap. Um, and this is Cavalry gains plus five attack uh, versus Archers. This is a solid uh, boost. I am going to put it in B tier because melee cavalry tends to be good against Archers anyway. This just makes them more gooder versus archers. And by the time that you get to this stage, the whole Burmese weakness to archers, like that's not really a thing anymore. Uh, Cavaliers still kind of get mowed down by like a lot of really strong archers. Your battle elephants, they have so much armor, they don't care about archers anyway. So really this is most useful for hussars. Uh, and it makes your hussars, you know, stronger against really any sort of archer unit. So it is a good solid tech, but it doesn't really change too many dynamics. Um, maybe I just haven't seen enough games with it, but we're going to put it in B tier. I mean, if you really want to justify A tier, then I think, you know, you're not insane. But, um, uh, yeah, I think we're going to stick it in B tier. Next is Byzantines with Logistica, 800 food, 600 gold, Cataphracts deal trample damage, and, uh, that's in a 0.5 tile radius, and they also get plus six additional bonus damage versus infantry. This is going to be going in the A tier. It, yeah, again, like Warwolf, it only affects one unit, the Cataphract, which makes it semi-situational, but it allows the Cataphract to do something unique, right? Very few units in the game deal trample damage, and having that for your Cataphracts just makes them absolutely shred infantry on top of getting the extra bonus damage, and it makes them also a lot more useful in any sort of melee fight in general, and, you know, you have to try and play a bit more spread out with units. It just you know, it drastically increases the damage that you do overall. Oh, I should say that it is five. It is set five trample damage. It's not based on the Cataphrax attack. Uh, but still, five trample damage is very good. It notably also does not impact, like, the thing that you're targeting. It only affects the stuff in its vicinity. Still, very powerful tech, only useful for Cataphrax. If it applied to all cavalry, then it would easily be S tier. 
but it is just for the cataphract. Celts with Fuhrer Celtica, Celtic Fury, uh, 750 food and 450 gold. Siege Workshop units have plus 40% HP. Yeah, this is going to be going into the S tier. It makes your siege. Celt Siege is already really good, right? It attacks faster and the Siege Workshops work faster. And now if they have more HP, it's like you get the, the tanky bonus and the attack bonus. And this just makes, you know, Celt Siege onagers generally regarded as one of, if not the very best in all of Age of Empires. It affects your rams, it affects your scorpions. And it's just, it stacks with the other Celt bonus so effectively that you're just getting so much value from those siege units. And yeah, super strong tech. There's a reason it was nerfed and is one of the few nerfs that Celts got. Um, it used to be plus 50%. Now it is, you know, for only 40%. Still super strong tech and uh, invaluable tool for Celts in the late game. Moving on to Chinese with Rocket Tree. 750 wood and 750 gold. It is in practice 20% uh, less than that because it benefits from the Chinese tech discount. So Chukunu get plus 2 attack for their first arrow and Scorpions just get plus 4 attack. The Scorpions bonus thing is not really all that relevant because Scorpions don't get Siege Engineers with Chinese so you're you're really missing on that range because Heavy Scorpions only have 7 range. Uh, the Chukunu extra attack is nice, uh, but it's a little bit more like icing on the cake thing, so we're going to put it in B tier. You know, pick it up for your Chukunu in the late game. There are situations where it is better than the Elite upgrade, but that's like... That's, that is, that is you know, getting into like the, the really nitty-gritty uh, situational side of things. It's a good tech. Get it for your Chukunu in the late game. If not... If you're not going Chukunu, obviously, don't really go for it, unless you're going for Mass Scorpions, which is a bit odd in most cases. Next is the Cumans with Cuman Mercenaries, 650 food, 400 gold. Team members can create free five free Elite Kipchaks per castle. Yeah, this is going in the D tier. You have to get several castles before this is even, like, worth its resources in a 1v1. And in team games, chances are if you're Cumans and you're, no, your allies are doing whatever, they don't want to be going for elite Kipchaks, because elite Kipchaks aren't even a super strong unit. They're a, a cheap cav archer that's fast, and it's great when you have, like, a ton of them, but individually they're not that good. So getting, like, 15 or so elite Kipchaks, if your ally is going on foot archers, then, then that's not too useful. You don't have the upgrades. If they're going for cavalry, you don't have the upgrades, so it's, like, only if they're going cav archers. It's just not a very useful upgrade at all. I don't like it. Uh, it, it's just not one that really fits Age of Empires too well, in my opinion. Moving on, though, to Dravidians with Woot Steel. 750 food, 600 gold, infantry and cavalry attacks ignore armor. Uh, and this does, importantly, include the Siege Elephant. This is going in the S tier. Kind of like with um, Garland Wars with the Aztecs, this is just what makes Dravidian infantry uh, good, especially the Arumi, uh, because of the blast damage that Arumi deal. But it's also insane for your halberdiers, it's insane for your champions, which are all easier to tech to, and it affects your unique unit, so uh, that's all quite nice. It means your light cavalry are better than Viking light cavalry, and it is really helpful as well for the siege elephants because they have very low base damage. You know, you only have 8 fully upgraded, but if you ignore armor, then you're dealing that 8 damage plus the, the blast damage much more consistently. So it makes the Dravidian elephants more useful in straight up fights. Uh, really, really powerful tech. I don't think you'll see many people who say that, oh, Woot Steel, it's not very good. Uh, having your infantry and cavalry ignore armor is just very helpful. Uh, that doesn't really matter for your battle elephants because they're terrible anyway. Your light cav are still bad, but hey, it affects, you know, four units. That's quite useful. Next is Torsion Engines for Ethiopians. A thousand food, 600 gold, pretty pricey, but Siege Workshop units uh, have increased blast radius. And now that increase in blast radius is uh, based on the individual unit. It's not a set value. And that applies to your siege rams, your siege onagers, heavy scorpions, and bombard cannons. And this is going in the S tier. This is the reason Ethiopian siege is good. It is absolutely wild how much of a damage increase it is. You get, I think, 1.95 or 2 uh, tile blast radius for your siege onagers. It is just absolutely silly. Your bombard cannons get a larger blast radius than Hofnitsa. Um, Hofnitsa are still better, don't get me wrong, but it means you're at least semi-competitive. Uh, Scorpions, it doesn't really help out too much, but, uh, the Siege Rams, you know, you're just knocking down half a wall with, uh, just, you know, one attack. 
It's uh, it, it's just really strong. It's what makes Ethiopian Siege so deadly in the late game. Again, I don't think there's going to be a lot of argument in terms of, is Torsion Edge is a super good unique attack. Next is going to be Franks, and Franks have Chivalry. Uh, it used to be Bearded Axe, but remember they swapped places. Um, so 600 wood, 500 gold, and it increases the production speed of stables by 40%. This is like getting two Hun bonuses all at once. It's a solid... Um, Attack, and it is going to be going in the B tier. Uh, it lets Paladin and Cavalier train more quickly, and it lets you just have those, you know, Cavalry units fly out of those stables. Unfortunately, your Light Cav are still really bad, so it it's most impactful for the Knight line. And the thing is, Knights are expensive, man, and they don't really have the greatest unit turnover rate because they're melee units. So oftentimes you can't really get the full benefit from this, but especially in team games, it can be an absolutely devastatingly strong attack. So... It's not, like, necessarily the greatest thing in the world, but it is a strong enough unique tech, I think, to pretty comfortably justify the B tier, uh, you know, pick it up for Franks in the late game. Chances are you're making some sort of stable unit. Now we're going to be going to Goths, and they have Perfusion, 400 wood, 600 gold, and Barracks... Uh, actually, this should be Barracks just work twice as fast, because uh, it does improve research time. Uh, and that's going to be going in the S tier, yeah. Perfusion's really good. It's like the reason Goths are so insane with their infantry spam in the late game. They also get the 20% faster working barracks from their team bonus. So you just have those infantry units fly out of the barracks. They're also discounted. I mean, everything with Goths, it just... The bonuses combine so well for their infantry play. It's what they do. It's all they do, but it is what they do. And we have to recognize that Perfusion is just a big part of why that Goth spam is so terrifying. Next we have Gujurs, and they have Frontier Guards. It is pretty expensive at 800 food, 700 gold. It gives your camels and elephant archers plus four melee armor. This is going in B tier. Mm. On the list I made earlier, I put it in A tier. I don't know. Uh, Yeah, let's put it in B tier. I changed my mind. It's pretty expensive, and yes, it does make your camels, you know, much more competitive, because you have, uh, you, you miss Blast Furnace, so having that extra melee armor is, is pretty helpful. But at the same time, camels are still going to do what they do well. It makes them, I guess, better against, like, swordsmen and hussars. They're pretty bad against swordsmen still. And hussars, they kill insanely fast with Gujars anyway. So there aren't really all that many, you know, melee units that you face that aren't cavalry and aren't halberdiers, <laughs> Right? So, like, how much is this really, really helping you? It helps you against swordsmen. It definitely helps you against swordsmen. Um, and with the elephant archers, because you missed the last armor upgrade anyway, and Parthian tactics, they're still pretty darn bad. They can be really cheap with Gujurs. Uh 60 food, 70 gold, I believe, with Kshatriyas. But, again, chances are you're facing a bunch of halberdiers anyway. Um, it does help uh, elite archers versus stuff like Hussars, for sure. Um, and that's why it is going in B tier, but I just don't think it's quite at the same level as Logistica and, uh, Warwolf. So, yeah, we're going to go with B tier. Hindustanis are next, and they have Shatagni. Uh, 500 food, 300 gold, fairly cheap. Hand Cannoneers gain plus two range now, which is quite nice. Also going to be going in the B tier. Um, does it in itself make your Hand Cannoneers, like, the very best in the game? It's getting up there for sure, and the fact that it's a cheap upgrade is quite helpful. Hand cannoneers are still a little situational. I mean, you don't have Arbalest, so I guess maybe you're a little bit more incentivized to go with Hindustanis. Does it make your... It, it just doesn't feel quite as, like, insane as uh, Logistica or uh, Warwolf. So, again, this is... These two attacks are going to be, like, at the very upper end of B tier, so to say. Uh, because it does make your hand cannons outrange archers and skirmishers, which is really sick. Uh, and it helps their survivability combined with their extra armor they get as Hindustanis. So, like, all of these things do combine really effectively. And if you really wanted to put it in A tier, I wouldn't think you're crazy. Um, but I'm not quite sold yet. Um, still, very good upgrade. 100% worth picking up with hand cannons. You don't need that many upgrades anyway. Moving on to Zihans. Atheism, oh boy. 500 food, 500 gold. Uh, Relic and Wonder Victories take 100 more years to complete and enemy relics generate uh, less gold. Yeah, D tier. It's not a good upgrade, guys. <laughs> we play Conquest for multiplayer games and the it's so expensive for like having enemy relic gold that it's almost never worthwhile. <laughs> yeah, yikes. 
Next is going to be Incas with Fabric Shield. 600 food and 600 gold. Kamiox, Slingers, and Eagles gain plus one, plus two armor. This is a pretty solid upgrade. I'm going to yeah, put it in A tier. It's like you're getting an extra plate mail or ring archer armor for those units. And you have plate mail armor and ring archer armor anyway. And it's what makes your eagles, like, you know, anything beyond generic. It makes them super tanky against archer fire. It makes your slingers that much more difficult to kill. Same with Kamiuks. Kamiuks especially, like, they have so much armor that they can just become really difficult to take out, even with ranged units. So I don't, I don't think it's quite S-tier good, but you're, you're affecting three very useful units for the Incas, right? Like, probably their three best units, eagles, Kamiuks, and slingers. So... Making those units better is just going to, you know, really help the uh, power of your gold intensive counter units that you get with Incas in the late game. Next, we have Italians with Silk Road, 500 food and 250 gold. Trade units cost minus 50%. That applies to trade cogs and trade carts. Uh, going to be in the B tier as well. Essentially, in team games, pick it up. It's really nice. Having those cheap trade is something that is really handy because chances are when you're starting trade, gold is getting kind of thin anyway. Um... In 1v1s, it's useless. So it's just kind of like, you know, it's great in team games if in the late game. And I don't think it's it's C-tier level, but in 1v1s, it is just literally useless. So I, I think it's strong enough in team games to justify B-tier. But yeah, that's just me. Moving on to Japanese with my favorite named attack, Katapuruto, or Catapult. Uh, 750 wood and 400 gold. Trebuchets fire 33% faster and pack unpack... Um, four times faster. Also going to be in the B tier. I don't think it's quite as strong attack as Warwolf. Um, I, I mean, it does increase your just raw DPS of trebuchets against buildings, and it makes them, you know, much more mobile. It's the reason that your Japanese siege is not a complete disaster. Uh, no siege ram, no siege onager, no bombard cannon. But I don't think it's quite as good as Warwolf, because Warwolf just lets you win every single treb war, like, instantly, and it makes you... Your trebuchet is much more usable against units. Katabruto does help for sure, but I think it's more it's most effective as just like nuking buildings with your uh with your trebuchets, which is certainly quite good, but I don't think quite A tier. Khmer with double crossbow, 700 food and 400 gold. Ballista elephants and scorpions uh, fire two projectiles. The second projectile does half the damage of the main projectile. This is also going in A tier. It does affect two units, but they're two very similar units, right? You know, Ballista Elephants and Scorpions. But it does make those units absolutely fantastic. It just is a huge DPS increase. Uh, because that second projectile, it still does pass through damage. And you can kind of think of it, I think, in a similar vein to uh, Logistica. It's If you're going for that unit, pick it up, right? But there are a lot of games with Khmer where you aren't going for Mass Scorpions and um, Ballista Elephants. And if you're playing that more traditional army composition, Hussar, Arb, Halb, Siege Ram, that sort of thing, it, they, it's just not that useful, which unfortunately happens a lot. As much as I'd love every Khmer game to be mass Ballista Elephants, uh, you know, you have to be semi-realistic here. Uh, still, it's, it's an insane tech for those units, so I think definitely A tier. Koreans have Shin Kichon, 800 wood, 500 gold, Mangonels, Onagers, and Siege Onagers gain plus one range. It's essentially getting half the effect of Siege Engineers on top of Siege Engineers. So you do get that redundancy, which is really good. Still going to be a B-tier tech. Um, there aren't... It's not like the insane days when the, this used to give plus two range, and then Koreans also had plus run, one range uh, onagers. Yeah, I mean, it's it's good. You know, pick it up if you're making lots of Siege onagers. It only affects that unit. Um, yeah, I mean, you get uh, 10 range max, which is unfortunate because that's not really uh, like a huge break point. Uh, you're still not outranging defensive structures, which is, yeah, a little sag. Uh, but still, like, it's, it's a good tech. It helps you protect your siege onagers a bit better, and you can just fling those rocks from far away. And it, it's still good, right? It's just not quite as insane as something like uh, Fear Celtica. Next, we have Lithuanians, and they have tower shields. 500 food, 200 gold, quite cheap. Pikemen and skirmishers receive to pierce armor. This is going to be going in the A tier. Lithuanian um, pikemen miss both Imperial Age blacksmith upgrades, and they have halberdiers, but they do move fast, even faster than Celt halbs with squires. Um, so this at least gives you the same effect as plate mail armor, uh, and it really is important in helping your halbs survive quite a long time, especially since they do move faster. 
Um, you would still rather have plate mail armor, actually, because it doesn't give you the melee armor that plate mail armor does, but it, it's still good. Helps your helps a lot, but where it really comes into play is with your skirmishers. Um, it allows skirmishers to take one damage from both cav archers and arbalasts, and also a lot of archer unique units. So that's pretty wild. You know, you go from taking two damage normally down to one damage, you know, you're having the damage. Your skirmishers also move faster, so Lithuanian skirms are totally top tier. Uh, and it also helps the halves as well, so I think A tier is pretty uh, easily justifiable. Still not quite S tier, though. Just not as powerful enough in effect. Next we have Magyars with Recurve Bow. Uh, 600 wood, 400 gold, Cav Archers gain plus one range and attack. It's like getting another Bracer. Redundancy in Age of Empires is really good. Controversial, I'm going to put an A tier. I don't think it's quite S tier. This alone is what makes your Cav Archers insane as Magyars, and it does make them super good. Giving them the extra range and attack, it helps with their survivability and their damage. Um, it gives you the same range as, like, Arbalest, so that's all really helpful as well. The issue is it only affects Cav Archers, right? And if you're not going for Cav Archers, it's not a very useful tech at all. So is it quite good enough for S tier? The thing is, like... These techs are all so civilization-defining and affect several different units, so they're not remotely situational. Like, none of these techs in S tier are situational. Like, you almost always want to be picking them up at some point. Recurve Bow, I mean, think you're, you know, you're playing Magyar Pocket in a team game. Totally reasonable situation. You're not getting Recurve Bow because you're making Paladins, and chances are you're not going Paladin plus Cav Archer. It's still such a strong upgrade that I think you can easily justify A tier with it, even though, you know, it's just another fletching. But yeah, I, I don't think I can really put it in S tier. Malay, Forced Levy, 850 food, 500 gold. The Swordsman line cost is replaced with an additional food cost. So essentially it goes from being 60 food, 20 gold, to 80 food, 0 gold. And then you can bring that down by 15 by uh, with supplies, so they cost 65 food in the end. This is an S tier tech. I know it only affects one unit, but it fundamentally changes the role of a unit, of that one unit, which is like insanely good. Uh, like with Kemendar and with uh, Trash Bows, except honestly, it's even better because two handed swordsmen, they counter trash units, right? They are, you know, you have two handed swordsmen that are otherwise fully upgraded, and this just allows you to counter every single trash unit with just one trash unit and also counter buildings. Trash units aren't good against buildings, generally speaking. Two-handed swordsmen are. They get bonus damage, you know, if you have arson, high base attack, you can use them against hussars, against pikemen, against skirmishers without any problem. And they only cost food, so it helps make up for the fact that you don't have hussars, or very good light cav whatsoever. And it is such a iconic part of the Malay late game that I, I feel like it, it just allows the Civ to do something completely different as in Trash Wars. So that's why I, I do think it is worthy of S tier. Moving on to Malians with Farimba. 650 food, 400 gold, cavalry gain, plus 5 attack. But remember, you don't have Blast Furnace, so it's kind of like plus 3 attack over most civs. Yeah, we're still going in the S tier. It is an insanely good tech. It affects your Light Cav, your uh, Cavalier, and your Camels. It makes them all quite strong. Um, you know, it completely makes up for the fact that you don't have Blast Furnace. It gives you some of the best Cavalier and Camels. Uh, it helps make up for the fact that you don't have Paladin. I mean, it's not as good as Paladin, but it gives you this really nice, like, power spike where you can get Farimba, Cavalier, and plus four defense all at once in early Imperial Age. Um, and your Camels are just some of the very best in the game. Uh, your Light Cav are pretty much as good as regular Hussars because you don't have the extra HP that Hussar gives you. But it's still just such a powerful upgrade, giving three very important units for the Civ, plus five attack, plus three attack, essentially. Um... Yeah, I, I think this is definitely an S tier tech. Next up is Mayans, El Dorado, 750 food, 450 gold. It does have a long research time now at 70 seconds, which is worth mentioning. Most everything else is like 40 to 60 seconds. Uh, but it gives your Eagle Warriors plus 40 HP, which is, uh, what, a 66% increase? I'm going to put it in A tier still. It only affects Eagle Warriors. Granted, Mayans have like two decent <laughs> gold unit options, the Plumed Archers and Eagle Warriors. And it is insane for that unit. But there are also times when you're just not going for Eagle Warriors, and then the tech is not useful whatsoever. The effect is so strong for Mayan Eagle Warriors that it makes me tempted to put it in S tier just because Mayan Eagle Warriors are absolutely insane. But 
it is, again, it's just their eagle warriors. It doesn't help out any other unit with the civilization. So I am going to put it in A tier. But, like, if you're, like, if you really believe in Mayan eagle warriors, if they've killed you enough times on ladder for you to say that this is an S tier tech, I'm not going to say you're insane. Mongols, drill, 500 wood, 450 gold, siege workshop units move 50% faster. This is applying to your siege ram, siege onagers, heavy scorpions, and siege towers, uh, but not your trebuchets. This is an S tier tech. It's like torsion engines. It's what makes Mongol siege good. Um, having the mobility and like the micro ability with siege onagers is super helpful. And I guess scorpions to a lesser extent. Um, and it makes your siege rams, you just tear through enemy bases so quickly. Um, 50% speed boost is wild. So yeah, I, I, I don't really think I need to justify S tier with this tech. It is just absolutely insane. It's even worth getting before Siege Engineers in a lot of cases, and I think that just goes to show how strong the tech is. It's not that expensive, so it's something that's pretty affordable in a lot of games. But yeah, drill, insane tech. Persians with Mahouts. 300 uh, food, 300 gold. War elephants move 30% faster. C tier. Pick up the tech if you're going for war elephants. You don't go for war elephants all that often, so... Yeah. You know. You know. War elephants are very rare as is, and it, like it's a tech like you want to get it for war elephants. You kind of need to get it for war elephants because war elephants are so slow. But yeah, I I can't justify any higher than C tier. As much as I love me some pachyderms, poles, Latitic legacy, seven fifty food, five fifty gold, light cav deal, trample damage. Now this is twenty five percent the damage of the uh, scout unit. This means it's not like the straight up five of uh, cataphracts. But it is still extra damage, and Winged Hussars are pretty wild, so I'm going to put that in A tier, because it just allows Winged Hussars to kind of help counter, like, everything with pulls in the late game. Uh, yeah, it, it's a very strong tech. You want to pick it up for your Winged Hussars at some point. It's a little expensive, but not terrible. Uh, it, it, it's just a good tech. You know, you, you want to get it for your, uh, your Winged Hussars. It's not as insane as Schlock to Privileges, but it's still quite strong. Next up is Portuguese with Archibus, 700 food, 400 gold, ballistics for gunpowder units. They better track moving targets. Uh, the thing is, Archibus doesn't work in some cases. Like, you're still missing a fair amount at range because the accuracy of a lot of gunpowder units is kind of low. It's kind of a hard tech to evaluate. I mean, it, it helps your organ guns, your bombard cannons, your hand cannons. It even affects bombard towers and cannon galleons. I'm pretty on the fence between B and A tier. Um, I'm going to put it in A tier just because gunpowder units are such a core part of the Portuguese late game and it affects like a ton of different stuff. So it's just worth picking up. It makes those units better at range where gunpowder units can struggle a little bit. It helps your bombard cannons a lot in bombard cannon wars. Uh, it helps your organ guns shoot stuff at long range better. Like I said, it doesn't always work, which is like why I'm like a little hesitant, but I, I think it's still a strong enough effect to justify A tier. It's not horribly expensive either. Saracens, their new Imperial Age unique tech, Counterweights, 650 food, 500 gold, trebuchets in the Manganel line deal, plus 15% uh, damage. This is going to be going in the B tier. It's one of those icing on the cake techs, you know. It doesn't really change the fact that trebuchets and siege onagers and whatnot are good against what they're always good against, good against but, you know, pick it up in the post-imp if not. You know, it's okay. It's not going to be the end of the world. Sicilians, Hoburk, 700 food, 600 gold, knights get plus one, plus two armor. It's like getting another plate barding armor on top of plate barding armor. Redundancy is really strong in Age of Empires. I think we can talk about Hoburk in a similar vein to Recurve Bow. I think now that Sicilians have their bonus damage uh, bonus reduced, that's weird to say, but... It doesn't mean the Cavaliers are like a one-size-fits-all unit as much anymore. Um, they are at least more counterable. Uh, and again, it only applies to your Cavalier. If this affected your Light Cav, well, then that would kind of be like <laughs> Silk Armor. But still, yeah, I, I don't think it quite makes it to S tier. If I'm not putting Eldorado and Recurve Bow in S tier, then I'm not putting Hobrick in S tier. So I think that's fairly consistent. Still absolutely insane for your Cavalier. Like, pick it up. If you're going for Cavalier, like, 100%. It's it's really good. It means ranged units just deal so much less damage. Slavs. Drusina. 1,200 food, 500 gold. Infantry uh, deal blast damage. Uh, same as a Cataphract. It's 5 damage uh, flat in a uh, 0.5 radius. Uh, that 5 damage is not 
impacted by armor, so it is always 5 damage. This is the most expensive unique tech, by the way, I think in terms of total resources, 1700. And I think that says a lot it's going in the S tier. It is a really, really good tech. It's what makes Slav infantry strong. It's why they are classified in-game as an infantry and siege civilization. I mean, yeah, they have good cavalry too, but still. Uh, you know, it affects your champions and your halberdiers. Those are your only infantry units as Slavs, but it does affect both of them, and you do see both of them a lot. It means you just always win these huge massed fights where Slavs uh, just really shine. You can just see that. It, it, it's it's hard to quantify unless you like play with it. It's like one of those texts that its effect sounds strong, but it just telling you about it doesn't convey how strong it is unless you just play with it yourself or see it for yourself in uh, casted games. It, it, it's just an insane tech. Uh, it makes your infantry, you know, some of the very best in the game. And other than that, they're completely generic other than free supplies. So yeah, good stuff for Slavs. Spanish Supremacy, 400 food, 250 gold. Villagers have exceptional combat stats. Uh, they go have, what, 80 HP, 9 attack, and 5, 6 armor, 4, 6 armor, something like that. It's going to be another B tier attack. It makes your villagers a lot more resistant to raids, and they can even fend off uh, enemy units a little bit. It's really helpful for placing forward castles and bombard towers, which you tend to be doing a fair bit with Spanish, with your faster builders. Um, it doesn't really help out your army in any way, as much as we'd love to have the villagers with uh, an aggressive stance. That would not that would not be good for the game. Um, so it's not like you can say villagers are like a trash unit because they're just not that practical to fight with. Uh, but it's still a strong tech, and it makes your villagers you know, just that much safer in a late game scenario. Tadar's Timurid Siegecraft, 500 wood, 400 gold, trebuchets get plus two range, and you get flaming camels. Oh boy. Uh, it's going to be going in B tier. I think it's similar in strength to Kataparuto, you know, infecting your trebuchets. I don't think it's quite as good as Warwolf, but it does give you 19 range trebuchets, which are pretty darn wild. You can just snipe stuff from halfway across the map. And I guess flaming camels can be used very situationally. Yeah, I mean it's it's uh it, it's just a solid upgrade. Uh, giving that extra range for your trebuchets is is just helpful. It actually can be helpful in treb wars even because if you outrange the enemy trebuchets, then you can shoot them and they can't shoot you. Unfortunately, your trebuchets are still very inaccurate, so that's kind of bleh. but yeah, I, I still think it's a solid B tier uh, imp tech. Next is Teutons with Crenellations, 600 food, 400 stone. I believe this is the only unique tech that costs stone now. Uh, no, Great Wall does too. Um, castles have plus three range, in, uh, garrison infantry fire arrows. Uh, it is the same as villagers for every single infantry unique unit, so it's five attack over two seconds or a DPS of 2.5, so it's not like it's all that great. Your infantry don't fire a bunch of extra arrows. Uh, the big effect, though, is castles have plus three range, and it is going to be going into the A tier. It flips a very important uh, dynamic between castles and bombard cannons uh, in that you outrange all but Turkish bombard cannons because you have 13 range fully upgraded. So even with siege engineers, you can still match the range, which means that castles can just shoot down bombard cannons. It's a really strong upgrade. I mean, and of course, the castle arrows just, you know, reach that much further. Uh, yeah, plus three range is pretty huge, and it it, it flips a really, like, common... Uh, you know, counter to castles, like count castles are countered by bombard cannons, now castles can counter bombard cannons. So having that sort of flip in matchup, I think, is really, really valuable. Uh, I don't think it's quite S tier, but it is still a really strong tech for sure. Speaking of which, Turks, they have artillery, 450 wood, 500 gold, bombard towers, bombard cannons, and cannon galleons all gain plus two range. Oh, is it S tier? I think it is. I put it down A tier, but like now that I'm thinking about it, it's really good. I mean, the Cannon Galleon thing is like not that big of a deal, but it's an insane boost for both Bombard Cannons and uh, Bombard Towers. Bombard Cannons now outrange every other Bombard Cannon in the game and can even outrange Teuton Castles and Korean Keeps. And they're one of the few things that you can see deal with Hofnitsa. You know, you have the extra HP. Um, they train faster with Turks, so you're uh gelling with a bunch of other bonuses the sieve has and you know you can just snipe stuff from super far away and with bombard towers it gives them 13 range so um now you don't have to worry about um don't have to worry about bombard cannons yeah there we go bombard towers outrange bombard cannons unless they're turkish so yeah just super super insane upgrade 
Uh, now that it doesn't cost stone, it's much more easy to get to. So worthwhile pickup for sure in the late game with Turks in most situations. And as we close things out, we have paper money, 600 wood, 350 gold. Lumberjacks slowly generate gold in addition to wood. I don't know the exact value, but it's like, I think 30 lumberjacks is a relic, something like that. Um, Kind of hesitating between B and C tier. It does cost uh, gold to get going. Kind of like Burgundian Vineyards, uh, but it does come out in the game a lot later than Burgundian Vineyards because it's the Imperial Age unique tech. So I do, I do think I'm going to put it in C tier, especially because, I, if I recall correctly, I put Burgundian Vineyards in B tier. But this is like in the context of all of the other Imperial Age unique techs. And because Imperial Age unique techs are so strong, I feel like Paper Money just doesn't quite, you know, compare to a lot of these other really good techs. I mean, you can see almost all of the techs are in B tier or higher. Uh, so yeah, I, I do think I'm going to put it in C tier. And last but not least, we have the Berserker Gang. 850 food, 400 gold. It is pretty expensive, uh, but it makes your Berserks uh, regenerate HP twice as fast. I'm going to put it in C tier, just like Magrebi Camels. Pick it up if you're going for a lot of Berserks, but it only affects Berserks. And it, you know, it, it, it's just like, okay, pick it up if, if you have the resources and you're going for Berserks in the late game. Anyway, guys, here we are. Here's our finalized tier list for our Imperial Age unique techs. I hope you enjoyed the video. Of course, let me know what you think and what your favorite imp unique techs are in the comments below. And of course, thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.